you draw upon a lot of odd, disparate sources of, of archival footage. Can you talk about the amount of time that, that you spent following these guys around? We shot the ongoing um, kind of like uh, investigation, I would say until early 2007, right? So that's kind of the time frame of the story. And then um, we just started kind of going back through all these interviews and just kind of sifting through it and figuring out how, like, how to build the case that we want to build. Uh, and then, you know, from there, it just kind of was like a matter of, okay, well, we want to make this clear and we want to make this clear, so what material do we have and what can we drum up to kind of, you know, and, and how can we use this material to sum it up? So that's kind of, that was the process, I guess. Justin, let me start with you. I mean, it's, uh, now that this film is complete and, you know, in a way there's, uh, you know, some maybe closing the circle of, uh, of, of this search, to, is there... Uh, how does that feel after spending so much time on the search to to have it kind of ended and out there? Um, it it, it, it uh, feels incredibly satisfying and wonderful and uh, great and superb and spectacular and marvelous. <laughs> uh, Matt, you did the illustrations uh, uh, for the film. Um, uh, very good. Can you talk about uh, what went into that? So you, you know, what source material uh, you were drawing, uh, drawing off of? Uh, John contacted me sort of right after I had gotten out of graduate school, and I'd never, I'd never heard of it. And you sent me all of the messages on the tiles, which were very visual. Um, and so the angle I, I approached it from was just this idea of this big mystery and conspiracy. So I just tried to surround myself with as much of that you know, there was imagery like the, the mafia and Soviets and the government and the media. And um, I did as much as I could just to draw from that uh, without with knowing so little about this and, and sort of getting inside those, those really cryptic messages as best as I could. Um, so I just tried to give everything a very conspiratorial, suspicious, tense edge to it because it, it felt like that's sort of what you wanted in a way, right? So... I would only add that when you know when I saw Matt's work, and Steve was actually the one who had first pointed uh, Matt out to me because he saw his work on on our local paper, on the city paper, and um, when I saw Matt's stuff, I said this is perfect, and I didn't really I don't I don't feel like I need to give him a lot of direction because I felt like when you pick the right person, you let them do their thing, and you know Matt did his thing, and it was perfect. Thank you very much, John. Uh, no, it was a, it was just a pleasure of working on the film and especially seeing it done. Yeah, I didn't know how the movie ended until until now. They wouldn't tell me even in emails. Steve, uh, I want to ask you, as, as as someone who uh, you know has a great devotion to uh, to these tiles, is do, do they continue to hold as much fascination when you come across a, a new one? Um, you know, it's been a long process and it's been many years and. You know, honestly, like it, it's not the same as it was when I was 13 or 14 years old and I saw it on the street and it's like, wow, what is that and how did it get there and what does it mean? Because, I mean, we've really answered all of those questions. So, um, not in that way. Uh, I do have, like, I guess a sort of obsessiveness that continues on. So, I, you know, if I, I will look for them everywhere I go. If I'm visiting a new city, I'll, like, check the intersection where they would would turn up. Je and Justin and I went on a car trip last week, I think it was, and Justin was pointing out a uh, tile on the highway as well. So it's still there. Yeah. <laughs> that one's still there, yeah. On the Packer uh, Ave exit. We can take some questions from the audience uh, right here. Um, the question was, uh, if in the course of the investigation or in the course of thinking about all this stuff with the tiles, if we had noticed any kind of like that street art, other types of street art were granted any kind of, uh, what was the word you used? legitimacy that the that the tiles weren't and I would say that um, it's really strange because I always say the in the street art world or whatever you want to call it there's a big disconnect between the uh, the the um, horizontal and vertical like worlds you know if, if you're doing if you're doing street art that um, is vertical based if it's on a wall people look at that one way and if it's horizontal on the ground people look at that in a completely other way that makes perfect sense. You know, the way we orient ourselves in our um, environment, you know, has a lot to do with how our species evolved with we walk upright, it's pretty strange. Um, and we scan our environment like this from five to six feet up with our eyes. And so we're kind of like designed as a species to notice stuff that's in this horizon line. Stuff on the ground, 
or I guess stuff high up in the air is a whole different thing. And so I think people really compartmentalize them very differently. And the street art community at large in regards to graffiti and stuff always kind of tended to seem to uh, pretty much completely ignore the tiles or anything about the tiles and never really heard them discussed too much in general street art discussions until they gained a lot more um, attention in the press and stuff. And then every once in a while they would come up in that regard. But people pretty much uh, more legitimacy or less? I don't know about legitimacy, but people always think of them th or had thought of them very differently. I'll just say that. I, I got a question real quick for the audience. Of all of you, how many of you actually did know of the Toynbee Tiles once you saw them on the screen? You said, oh my God, those. Okay, fair number of people. Okay, yeah, the question is how we dealt with the ethics. And you said something kind of interesting actually about kill, um, it's, a, it's a sin to kill a mockingbird, did you say? It's a tragedy. To Kill a Mockingbird. Um, this is something that we talked a lot about and that, um, you know, we kind of had a lot of really late night uh, conversations about what, you know, when we started um, pursuing the story, it seemed like it was fair game because it was very public art and, you know, this seemed like it was begging to be solved. And as we started getting closer and things started coming to focus, we started saying, you know, maybe we should stop, maybe, you know, maybe we should draw a line somewhere. And eventually we did. And that all plays out in real time as we're, as we're solving the mystery. And so then there's this question of, well, what do we do with this now? You know, um, people uh, have asked us a whole lot, um, you know, so, I mean, like people, people seem to be kind of equally on, on different sides here. They'll say, uh, you guys went too far and um, maybe you knocked on the door too many times or maybe it's hypocritical to say you're leaving this person alone but then make this movie, right? Um, and then other people say, uh, you guys didn't go far enough. You know, you should have went farther. I could think of other things if you were really dedicated, if you really wanted to get to the bottom of this and you're as obsessed as you say. And so I guess all I could say is that um, having lived through it and having gone through this and um, having found out uh, kind of the, the situation as it was going along, we just we drew a line where we felt comfortable, where we uh, thought it was okay, and then we decided to just tell the whole story uh, and I guess let all of you judge, um, you know, how we did on the ethical question. But, um, yeah, I don't know. It's something that uh, we, we think about a whole lot, you know, even even today we're talking about it. What? Uh, have you or will you send a DVD of the film to the uh, address where you suspect the Tyler lives? Yes, that's in the works. Um, and, you know, Justin and I have made a couple trips, uh, at, you know, I think last week and, you know, in the last couple weeks we've made a couple trips to South Philly to uh, talk to the neighbors and talk about what's going on. And uh, so far, so good. Justin wrote him another letter explaining about, you know, the movie being finished and, you know, what's, what's happening with all that. So we're trying to um, proceed... Uh, as fast as we can. Thank you very much for coming. Thanks especially to John Foy and the gang from Resurrect Dead. <laughs>